Welcome to our second episode of our new digital series, Tea and IT, where we serve up the hottest trends in IT with our very own homebrewed product experts. Today, we will be discussing blockchain and what that means for enterprise IT. We have our very own expert from Z Labs, Ram Prakash. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Anna. So I'm Ram Prakash, and uh, I lead the AI and blockchain efforts for Zoho Corporation. I've been with the company for around 10 years now. And I built the AI and blockchain platform for Zoho Corp from scratch. It's very nice here today, and I'm looking forward to a conversation, Anna. That's very impressive, Ram. So, what does what does blockchain technology mean? What does that mean for someone who isn't very knowledgeable in the cryptocurrency world? Um, I mean, how do we define it? Great question, Anna. So, blockchain as a technology uh, is is being very popular in the recent times. But I see it as a conglomeration of a lot of different techniques that we have used for a while. Right? I, I see it as a mix between distributed systems with the dash of cryptography. So blockchain as a tech per se uh, got, uh, but blockchain is a lot of things much beyond the cryptocurrency, especially when it comes to the enterprise use cases. Now, if you look at blockchain, blockchain comes into play when there is a lack of trust between two parties right now think about it i'm going to transfer ten dollars to you from here now there are probably four parties involved here first party is me second party is my bank third party is your bank and the fourth party is you right mm -hmm. now let's say uh, let's say both of us are real good friends and uh, we don't uh, you know really lie to each other so i owe you ten dollars and i initiate the transfer via my bank right so now there is a possibility that my bank turns evil Right? It collects the $10 from me and it has, it has it for itself and it never transfers it to your bank or your bank becomes evil. It collects $10 from my bank and has it for itself and never transfers it to you. Mm -hmm. right? So blockchain comes in when there is a lack of trust in a central authority. Now, let's say if we were trying to do this in the blockchain world, I would say think of blockchain as a spreadsheet that is shared with the whole world. Right? And, and you can only append things to it. Nobody can go edit any past transaction into it. Now, let's say we have 100 people sitting in between us who have access to the same spreadsheet. Right? So what happens is I say, uh, please do a, a dollar ten transfer to Anna, whose public key is so-and-so. Right? So now all of these 100 people start doing a computation. And when 51% of the people agree, that I have $10 in my account and your account is a valid account, the transfer goes through, right? So there is a new entry in the ledger saying Ram has transferred Anna $10. Of course, all of these will be public keys. So both of us will remain anonymous on the network, right? So this is basically how a blockchain works. So the goal is you have a lack of trust with a central authority. So you replace the central authority with a lot of computing nodes where they compute a particular computation to show the transaction is valid. This is blockchain in a nutshell for you. So how do you think that'll help in enterprise, especially IT? Do you think that with this technology, it'll kind of replace, you know, the hype that AI has brought into IT? Do you think it'll be kind of comparable? So, yeah, I, I, AI and blockchain are two very different things, but one thing that is common in between them is they are both very evolving. They are very high. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fear of missing out on people following these technologies because every day there's something new happening. It is happening at a very rapid pace. A lot of researchers, a lot of companies trying to monetize both the technologies, right? But the main distinction between AI and blockchain as I see is the fact that AI was incubated in the consumer space, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at enterprise tech as an entity, it always is having a late mover advantage, right? By that, I mean the technology gets incubated in the consumer world and then it eventually seeps on to the enterprise world. The enterprise world learns from the pitfalls of a particular technology in the consumer world. Now think about it. Five years back, we didn't have a lot of enterprise mobile apps. We got a lot of enterprise work done via browsers and laptops connected to a network where data was bound by networks, by physical networks. But today, a lot of enterprise work gets done on mobile. So the mobile app ecosystem got incubated in the consumer world and then got promoted to the business world. So is AI. We had personal speakers. We had uh, 
uh, friend recommendations on social networks. We had uh, product recommendations on e-commerce networks. And today we have, you know, outage prediction networks, right? You, you have an IT monitoring system. Somebody can predict an outage for you. Isn't that cool? The technology has matured. But going back to blockchain, blockchain doesn't really have a playground in the personal space, in the consumer space, mm-hmm. right? So blockchain is a direct entrant to the enterprise space. And if you look at today's enterprise software landscape, the fact that a lot of enterprise tools scatter to solving intra-organizational problems, right? And, and we haven't, enterprise software hasn't realized or hasn't reached inter-organizational problem solving areas, right? So when it comes to intra-organizational problems, there is no central authority that you don't have trust on, right? So, so let's say uh, my employer and my payroll is like my employer knows all my payroll details, but then we are bound by laws of employment. Trust is being enforced by a lot of laws that are around, or even think of enterprise IT, right? You have service delivery, you have endpoint management. Now you, you are always bound by some form of agreement when you are intra org right? Enterprise software hasn't still gone up to the inter-organizational uh, problem solving, right? So generally when they, when they talk about blockchain, they talk about land registry. Right. So there is a registrar office, there is a seller, there is a buyer. Right? Now let's say seller wants to sell his land. So he meets the buyer outside, they go to the registrar's office. Now if you see that the copy of the documents are made in triplicate. The seller gets a copy, the registrar office files a copy and the buyer gets a copy. Right? Now if either of the parties or any of the parties disappear or say the transaction didn't go through or, or try to default on payments. right? So there is a triplicate copy of it and it is a decentralized problem. So this is where blockchain has a straightforward use case. The, the, the problem is decentralized. Your solution is also decentralized. So it's a right fit. So one way to look at enterprise uh, IT uh, being blockchain ready is to find out problems that are decentralized. Right? Yeah. So that is where blockchain is a natural fit. So I would say starting off with uh, making your audit reports, right, becoming very tamper proof is one good place to start off for blockchain in enterprise IT. Any record that exists has to be tamper proof. Think of something like a password audit log, right? You don't want somebody to go tamper with your logs and then say uh, something that didn't happen or erase something that happened. Now blockchain can bring in such transaction verification mechanisms where you can throw the logs of your transactions to the to a public blockchain or to a private blockchain and then say that at this point of time, this is what that existed, right? So you bring in a proof of existence, you bring in a, a proof of uh, tamper proofness so that that is where I see the first application in the next two, three years, we are going to see a lot of such use cases in enterprise IT. And I think that would be blockchain's first venture into enterprise IT. Well, these are all really great things that I would assume we would all want to see from blockchain technology when we integrate it into enterprise IT. But do you think there are any potential downsides? I mean, I know that this is still, the concept's still very new, so I'm, I'm sure there are downsides to this, but what off the top of your head can you let us know right now that could be potential potential problems? Okay, so yeah, it, it, it is really cool, but uh, let's go back to our uh, banking problem. Again, uh, what was the transaction between just two bank servers? Now has a minimum of 100 people sitting and you know doing some computation. Think mm-hmm. about the enormous power it's going to consume. In fact, there are statistics that says a blockchain network actually requires more power than a few of the developing economies in the world. Right? So that is the first problem. The second problem is I don't want to see blockchain as powerhouses. Mm. Let me explain. Internet as a technology is very decentralized. Blockchain again is decentralized. Internet was just a network of networks. But then there evolved mega carp internet companies that owned most of the data on the internet. Now think about it. Let's say you are an independent musician, right? Uh, you you make music videos and you make a living out of it, and and all of a sudden uh, this big site decides to stop streaming your audio or video, citing some violation, mm-hmm. right? And you don't even have a backup of your of, of your life's work because you thought it it is in the cloud and it is going to be safe, mm-hmm. right? You see, uh, the question of central authority and trust slowly comes into our story. Yeah. Right. So, so now, so now internet has become very centralized. So we are looking at a decentralized tech, but even today, the state of blockchain, now let's say there's a very big grocery chain. Okay. This grocery chain wants to put all of its avocado sourcing data 
into a blockchain so that whenever a customer complains of a bad avocado they can track and trace it to the farm or the farmer who actually sold it to the big grocer right so what happens here is there is an uneven power distribution here the big grocer obviously has the most power right it is as good as putting things into his database so he simply says you you are a farmer you are a simple entity now please don't sell avocados to me if you don't want to share your data on my blockchain mm -hmm. right. so how how will this solve this can probably be solved when when two big grocers form a consortium right and that is where let's say both of them take a 50 50% ownership and a 51% uh, you know uh, a stake in computation really means something it really means that the power is distributed and things are going to be authentic now now let's think about it let's say the two grocers here are going to take a 40 40 share and the farmers take a 20% share right now now this gives a lot of decentralization now now not just grocery chains you look at any any bigger entity like this now let's say there are two competing banks and now now let's say they're going to share their blockchain platforms and form a consortium it can be any number of competing banks but minimum there should be two people think of something like insurance where you have your your health insurance your car insurance linked together and let's say you uh, the unfortunate case of somebody meeting with an accident now if they're ready to share their data in a consortium that is where a 51 percent majority will will really mean something otherwise it will become another centralized internet so a good way out would be uh, you know forming consortiums and making sure that the blockchain itself doesn't become uh, very centralized uh, so consortiums are the way to go but apart from this i see a lot of scope and potential for cases where we need integrity uh, data integrity data tamper proofness and things like that where enterprise softwares need a lot of such things think of something like a password manager right so you you need to keep special track of people who all access that particular password which is a critical resource think of something like event log management where you're managing access to a very critical uh, set of data and and you want that audit trail to be tamper proof you don't want somebody deleting or inserting uh, things that didn't happen now blockchain can ensure all of that can happen even though when it is an intra organizational problem so i would say in spite of all its uh, uh, problems blockchain has really a long way to go and will be solving a lot of interesting problems especially when enterprise software so start solving inter organizational problems well thank you so much ram i appreciate all your examples, all your beautiful illustrations. I feel like there's no one who's able to explain it better than you. And if you guys want to hear more from Ram, please attend our ITCON. We have two going on in the month of October, one in APAC and one in North America. You guys can definitely register to either of those virtual conferences down below. And to end this, this episode, Ram, I want to know what, what tea are you sipping on? What helps you, what helps you sleep at night? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, given, uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden uh, AI and blockchain have gone to the backseat and the word immunity has come in, come in like, uh, you know, the, the most hottest thing in the world now. So, so I'm, I'm uh, taking a sip of green tea infused with turmeric and ginger just to make wow. sure my immunity is all right. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Ram. Oh, we should do, we should toast. Oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you everybody Great. for listening. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.